We'll be able to voice vote the U.S. Marshal. I plan to vote for uh, the judgeship that Mr. Murphy's going to. I will oppose the other judicial nominees. I'm disappointed that the administration nominees have taken non-responsive uh, uh, answers to a new level. Rubber stamping these nominees without requiring answers is an abdication of our responsibility in vetting. I'll give you a few examples. This committee has voted to approve nominees that can't answer basic questions. Some have referred to hearings as a Kennedy bar exam. Well, this bar exam is one nominees apparently didn't need to pass. We're not quizzing nominees on arcane rules or highly specialized areas of the law. We're not asking about rules against perpetuities or structured transactions. When the Trump nominee couldn't remember what a certain legal motion was, Democrats were aghast at the inability to answer that question. Now Democrats have no, promise, no problem voting for nominees that think Congress has both uh, plenary power and uh, enumerated powers. This administration's nominees don't need to know what uh, the incorporation doctrine is, even though it's the basis of applying Bill of Rights uh, against the states. And if a nominee says that the Chevron doctrine involves deferring to an agency's factual determination rather than reasonable interpretations of ambiguous statutory terms, it just doesn't seem to matter to the other side. For a long time, nominees have said that the code of conduct prohibits them from answering certain questions. For example, some think nominees shouldn't say whether any Supreme Court case was correctly decided. Maybe de and many Democrats blasted Republican nominees for that very reason. They implied that nominees were questioning whether Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided. But did those loudly voicing those concerns vote against Biden nominees who declined to say whether Brown versus Board of Education was re correctly decided? No. It's troubling double standard. One thing we used to be able to ask a nominee about was things that they wrote. The code doesn't prohibit that. The Biden administration seems to have devised an innovative solution. Don't have the nominees review any of their materials except for the titles. We should expect the nominees answer these basic questions. Not everything is prohibited by the code of conduct. I'd also like to mention my ongoing oversight with Senator Portman in Inoff regarding the FBI's investigation of Afghan evacuees for potential national security risks. The Biden administration has said publicly that they fully vetted all Afghan evacuees. There's been two inspector generals report that found that the Biden administration failed to do just that. They weren't properly vetted. One report from the Defense Department Inspector General found at least 50 Afghan evacuees in the United States were flagged as potential significant security concerns. Last week, we had another classified briefing from administration regarding this very topic. At that briefing, I raised questions related to what the FBI is doing to assess and investigate Afghan evacuees. Uh, with respect to the answers that we did get, the FBI told all the members present that these very answers are classified. Simply put, it's unacceptable that the FBI continues to hide behind improper classification as an excuse to uh, withhold information that all Americans deserve to know. That's why I read with interest the continuing resolution that we have before us. It contains one provision where the FBI has requested an additional $15 million uh, to fund vetting. Why? And I'm going to quote, investigative activities associated with the Afghan resettlement operation. 
This funding request makes very clear that contrary to Biden's administration talking points, vetting failures continue to require the increased attention of the FBI at taxpayers' expense. The FBI should be wise, would be wise, to come clean to Congress and the taxpayers. Thank you.